the first building material that you need to have in your home, Dad. First, number one, you need to have the foundation of Jesus Christ in your home. Every home before you, we were going out to uh, uh, on uh, was it Highway 580 going out there towards Tracy area. They're building a bunch of new homes. Before they ever start putting any wood up, the first thing you see out there is a giant cement slab. What do they call that? They call that the foundation. And every home has got to have a strong foundation in order for it to be a good, strong home. And every home in here today, men, you are going to have to make sure that your home is founded upon and that there is a foundation of Jesus Christ in that home. Would you take your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 6, verse 46? Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. We're going to be using our Bible a little bit today, looking at different passages of Scripture. We're talking about building materials for our home. Luke chapter 6 and verse 46. Luke 6 and verse 46. The Bible says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Listen, if any home is going to withstand the storms that come its way, it needs to have a strong foundation. Right. When those floodwaters begin to rise, if it does not have a strong foundation, that home is going to crumble. Listen, men, fathers especially today, if you are going to have a good, strong home, you must have your foundation of Jesus Christ. It has got to be the solid foundation of Jesus Christ. If any home is to be a success in God's eyes, it must be built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10 through 14, I'll read it for you. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builded thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. If any man build upon that foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, Every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a reward. Listen, your foundation needs to be upon Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord is going to test your home from time to time. There are going to be some things that come up in your home. And let me tell you something. If you don't have Jesus Christ as your foundation, you're going to have some, some heartaches coming your way. You're going to have some trouble coming your way. Make sure, men, that you have your foundation as Jesus Christ. You see, a home is only as strong as its foundation. How many of you were in California in 1989? If you were in California in 1989, you remember the Loma Prieta earthquake, the last major earthquake we had here in the Bay Area. I still remember it. I was, uh, I believe I was in sixth grade or fifth grade at the time. I was uh, playing football with some friends and all of a sudden I heard a giant roar like a train coming through town. And I looked down at the ground and it was the weirdest thing in the world. You could see waves in the ground, almost like uh, water waves. It was a strong earthquake. You know, in San Francisco, there's a district uh, there uh, that's called the uh, Marina District. It's near Chrissy Field, overlooks the beautiful Golden Gate Bridge. People that live in that district, very wealthy, have some very nice homes. But there's something that those people in that district learned that year. They learned that their home was not built upon bedrock. Their home was built upon landfill. And many of those gorgeous homes there in the Marina District, when that earthquake began to happen, they began to sink in the ground. 
and uh, because of the liquefaction process there that happens after an earthquake. And they lost some beautiful homes. Why? Because it was not built upon a rock. The Bible says there that our rock is Jesus Christ. Amen. And if your home is going to withstand the earthquakes and the, and the storms that come its way, man, you are going to have to make sure your home is built upon Jesus Christ. You're like, well, I'm a real strong dad. I can handle everything that comes my way. Hey, sometimes there's things that you can't handle. And we need to make sure that our home is built upon Jesus Christ. You see, every individual in your home, dad, needs to, uh, needs to know Jesus Christ. You know, from very young age, dad, you ought to start teaching your kids about Jesus Christ. And you ought to give them opportunities to believe on the name of Jesus Christ. You say, well, when is my child ready to receive Jesus Christ? They'll let you know. They'll let you know. I remember uh, it was just about two years ago. My son, Andrew, no, maybe three years ago. Uh, my son, Andrew, was helping me one Saturday. We were back there in the baptistry cleaning it out, getting ready for some folks to be baptized the next day. And he was in there helping me spray the hose and such to clean off the sides. And, and he said, uh, he said uh, what, do you, what do you get baptized for? And I realized that there were some questions that he needed. And so I began to talk with him and, and explain what baptism is and explain about salvation. And right there in the, in the baptistry, right back there, my son bowed his head and prayed. Oh, precious moment that day. And I still remember it. It was special to me. But dad, the greatest thing you can do is to make sure that your children know Jesus Christ. To make sure that your wife knows Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful years ago, my, my mom, when she was dating uh, uh, my, my dad, who's my dad now, when, she, when they were dating, he was Catholic, she was Baptist. And she told him, she said, hey, if we're going to continue dating, you're going to have to start coming to church with me. And so he began, he'd go to mass on Sunday morning and Sunday night, go to the Baptist church. And every Sunday he'd go to that church on Sunday night. It was a, one of those old missionary Baptist churches. And that pastor, there was just a small congregation. And every Sunday night at the end, he said, there's somebody in here that's not saved. And he'd point, <laughs> he'd point right down at my dad. And he'd be like, oh. I wonder who he's talking about. And then next Sunday, you go, somebody in here that's not saved. <laughs> you know? And look, stare right at him. Well, he felt very compelled to get saved. And so he got saved. And boy, the Lord really transformed his life and surrendered to the ministry and, and, and preached here at this church for 27 wonderful years. And, uh, but thank God that my mother had the right sense to lead her future husband to the Lord. Listen, as a father in your home, make sure that your family knows Christ. I would hate to think as we're standing there in heaven, we look around and one of our children, or maybe our spouse, maybe our loved ones, our friends and family members are not there. You see, we need to make sure that our homes are built upon Jesus Christ. Not just that they're saved, but that everyone relies upon that rock. You say, well, my dad's the rock. <laughs> well, Jesus Christ is the rock that we need to lean upon in our home. So the first uh, 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 piece of building material you need in your home, dad, is you need the foundation of Jesus Christ. Number two, you need the board of unification. You thought I was going to say the board of education. Huh? <laughs> My dad would say, I'm going to apply the board, uh, uh, the, the board of Education to the Seat of Learning. It means I got a whoop. <laughs> but uh, the Board of Unification. The Board of Unification. Turn to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 21. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 21. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 21. We have a lot of building material around here. I was thinking about having some visual illustrations, but I was afraid you guys would be dropping things and breaking stuff up here. So just put a picture up there for you. The boards of unification. Ephesians 2.21 says, In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. You see, after you have your foundation, the next step is, is to start applying the boards. But you know what? You just can't put a two by four anywhere you want. 
It has to be in certain locations. It has to be a certain amount of inches from each other. There are some processes that you have to do to make sure that all those boards are unified together so as to hold up that building. Recently, when we took out one of the uh, beams from that wall there, we had to add some new boards to it to reinforce the wall. You just can't say, well, I'll just pull this board out, and pull that board here and put this here. No, there's some processes that you have to do to make it unified. Listen, in your home, dad, you need to have some unification. In order for a building to stand strong, everyone, everything must stand together as one in your marriage. You need to be one. Oftentimes when I have a marriage counseling, I'll say, listen, God wants your marriage to be as one. When you uh, uh, get married, uh, Brother Jarrell here in a few more weeks, where do you go? Oh, he's cooking them steaks. Uh, you get married, uh, uh, you, you leave mom and dad and you become as one. And the Bible says here that, that, that two flesh become one. And Genesis 2, 24, therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Their decisions need to be one. Everything that they do needs to be unified. You know, oftentimes in a home, you'll, you'll, you'll have one person that's calling all the shots. Listen, husbands and wives, if you have children, make sure that you're together on your decisions. Make sure that you're unified in the things you do with your home. Uh, oftentimes, kids are very good about, about playing mom against dad, you know. They'll go, to, they'll go to mom and say, hey, can I have this? And mom will say, no. What do they do? Go to dad. Uh, hey, mom's been, mom's been gone. Uh, my wife's been gone this week at the house. And uh, so we went to uh, Costco the other day. We got Cheetos. Amen. <laughs> We got Cheetos. We got ice cream several times. Uh huh. Uh, we went out to eat and ate junk food. You know why? Because dad was in charge. <laughs> now mom's back. But you, listen, you need to be unified as one. Unified in your decisions. Why? Because kids, they know right through it. They'll go to the one who they'll get the answer yes from. And so become one. I wasn't a good example of that. Don't listen. Do as I say, not as I do. All right? Now, parents and children should also strive to be, uh, be as one. Listen, in a home, kids, they're going to listen to their parents if they're right. And they need to also be together and unified in the decisions that they do. Amen? Doesn't mean that you have to listen to your kids uh, 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 and everything they tell you to do, but there ought to be some, hey, kids, what do you think about this? Well, well, let's come together as a family and let's do things together as a family. Amen? So they need to be as one. And the board of unification is so important in a home. Dad, you are the leader in that area. You need to make sure that you bring everyone together. Hey, one way you can do that is having a family altar. You say, what's a family altar? A time where you have maybe devotions together with the family. Open up the Bible, read it together. Have opportunities. Hey, kids, what, what do you think the Bible's talking about here? Or what, what, what do you think the Lord's trying to teach us here in the scripture? But do things like that together. It brings unity in the family. You see, the boards must stay together to form the strongest home. And a family that prays together stays together. Amen. A family that is unified together is going to be a strong home. Hey, if mom's doing her thing, dad's doing her thing, and uh, the kids are doing their thing, you're not going to have a very strong home. Hey, this, this is for free. This doesn't cost you anything today. But try doing this. Have family dinner together. I know it's not popular here in these days. Sometimes at homes, you got the kids in their room having dinner, dad's in his room having dinner, mom's in her room having dinner, and everybody's just doing their own thing. One, if there's any time that you get together, at least make it for dinner time. I know everybody's got places to be and things to do, homework to do or whatnot, but say, hey, you know what? We're gonna take 20 minutes, half hour, and we're gonna sit at the table together. We're gonna eat together in peace <laughs> and harmony. And uh, by the way, dad, don't talk about problems. Don't talk about homework and don't talk about what you got. Did you get in trouble at school today? All right. Just let it be an enjoyable time together as a family. You'd be amazed what that would do. That was for free. You didn't even have to pay for that today. The boards must stay together to form a strong home. 
When you go home, dads, I want you to do this. If you're to be unified in your home and unified in your marriage, I want you to do this. I want you to go home, pull your dictionary out if you have one, <laughs> get some scissors, and I want you to cut out two words. I want you to cut out the word divorce, and I want you to cut out the word quit. Divorce and quit. Listen, you ought never to use that word in your vocabulary. Listen, your wife needs you and your family needs you. We have enough homes without dads here in 2021. If there's any homes that ought to be strong and unified, it ought to be Christian homes here. And then also quit. Don't quit. That ought not to be in your vocabulary. Don't quit. Don't quit on your spouse. Don't quit on your kids. I know sometimes they drive you nuts and you just, you just want to throw your hands up and say, I give up. But don't quit on them. Turn to Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 2. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 2. You should be close right there. Anybody smell those steaks yet? Seeing if it's seeping through the door yet. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 2. The Bible says, With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another. And what's that next two words? In love. And you know the best way to be unified? Have some love. Have some love. The Bible says forbearing one another. That means there's not always going to be peace. There's not always going to be harmony. But if you apply love and forbear one another, guess what? You can have harmony. You can have unification in your home if you'll just apply love. Amen? And love is not selfish. Amen. Love does what somebody else wants. It's thinking of your spouse before yourself. It's uh, kids thinking of your parents before yourself. When we apply those things, we have a unified home. So I said we need to have the foundation of Jesus Christ. We need to have the boards of unification. The board of education wouldn't hurt either. And then number three, we need to have the fasteners of steadfastness. The fasteners of steadfastness. Turn to Psalms chapter 78. Verse 5. Psalms chapter 78, verse number 5. Psalm 78 and verse number 5. Fasteners are nails, screws, bolts. Those things are what hold the boards together. You can't just stick a 2 by 4 up and hope that it stands up there. No, you have to fasten it. And in a home, every father should apply the fasteners of steadfastness to the home. The Bible says there in Psalm 78, verse 5, For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers, that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep his commandments. Verse 8, and might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. Look at verse 37. Verse 37, for their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. You know what every home needs? They need steadfastness. Steadfastness. When we recently were remodeling and we took out the wall that was in that corner there, the wall that was on this side had obviously been, I remember as a kid, there was a uh, uh, some doors there that came in this way. Well, at some point they replaced the wall there. I'm not sure who did it, but Brother Osvaldo and I, we were over there taking out the wall. You know what we discovered about that wall over there? Watch this now. There were four nails. Four nails that held that entire wall together. Wow. One, two, <laughs> three, four. <laughs> We about died. We're like, are you kidding me? They put this wall up, this entire wall here, with four nails. I don't know if there was a nail shortage. Maybe, you know, we had a toilet paper shortage. They had a nail shortage. I don't know what the case was, but four nails. We were laughing. If somebody would have just hit that wall with their shoulder, they probably would have knocked the entire wall over. Unbelievable. You know what that wall was missing? A lot of fasteners. 
a lot of fasteners. You know what you need in your home? You need some fasteners. You need some stability. Dad, your children and your wife need you to be steadfast. Steadfast. Uh, steadfast means unmovable, means unshakable. Uh, unshakable, steadfast, when tough times come. Last year, Dad, your kids needed you to be steadfast. Amen? Hey, they were scared. They were worried. Uh, they had never been told they could not go to school for an entire year. And they needed a dad to say, everything's okay. We're going to make it through this. They need steadfastness. Uh, you know what? They need steadfastness when you're tired, too. Dad, you ever feel tired? I'll, sometimes I'll come home and I'm just tired and my boys will go, hey, you want to wrestle? <laughs> now, wrestling, you know, when they're little, it's a lot easier. But as they're getting older, you know, they, they do these like flying leaps with knees right into your chest and such, you know. And it's getting a lot harder. <laughs> And uh, you want to wrestle? And I'll, well, sometimes I'll be like, Brother Solomon, I'll be like, I don't feel like wrestling. I just want to sit in my chair, drink my coffee, watch the TV, right? But I realize that my, my boys need that. They need that time together. But you know what? They need you to be steadfast, even when you're tired, even when you don't feel like it. They need you to be steadfast, even when it's not popular. Listen. Dads today are, are quitting on their family. They're, they're, they're a lot of times not even a part of their kids' lives. You say, well, I'm there. Isn't that enough? Listen, just because you're at your home doesn't mean you're at your home. Hello? Just because you're there in the house doesn't mean that you're there, if you know what I'm talking about. Hey, be a part of your family's life. Be a part, part of... Part? Part? <laughs> Take that off of the live stream, please. <laughs> uh, be a part of your children's life. Have a part in their home, amen? Even when it's not popular, well, dad, other dads aren't doing it. Do I have to? The right father would. Dads, just because you are in your home does not necessarily mean that you're in your home. You know what? When tough times come, heroes run to the fight, but cowards run from the fight. All right? You want to be your kid's hero? Run to the fight when tough times come. Don't run away. Don't cower to it. Show them to, uh, that it's, it's, it's okay. You're going to make it through this. And stand up for them. They need that. Then number four, we're almost done. The walls of protection. In a home, you need walls of protection. Turn to Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 17. Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 17. You see, every home needs to feel safe. A home without walls is not protected. It's not safe. Your kids want to feel safe. Well, my wife was gone last week a couple times. My boys would be like, can I sleep with you, Dad? <laughs> Oh, you'll be fine. I'm in the room right next to you. I realize my son, Mark, he's not in here. He's a wild sleeper, man. He's one of those kids that'll punch you in the middle of the night, you know? Like, <laughs> and he's asleep, too. So I'm like, now you stay in your bed. I want to get some sleep tonight. You get scared, you can come in. But every home, every child, every marriage wants to feel safe. And a home without walls is not protected. Verse 17, it says here, they which build it on the wall... And they that bear burdens with those that laid it, every one with one of his hands wrought in the work, and the other hand held a weapon. Nehemiah was rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, and as the men were working, they had one hand with the trowel, and they were laying the wall, the foundation for the wall there, and the other hand was a weapon. Why? Because they recognized that they could be attacked at any moment. And they didn't have walls, so they needed to protect themselves. They needed to protect those walls there and protect the city. And you know what we need to realize? That we need some walls of protection in our home. Dad, if you really love your kids, then sometimes you have to learn to say no. Sometimes you have to learn to say no. I know it's always easier to say yes. It's sometimes it's easy just so you don't have the headache. Yeah, yeah, fine, go ahead. But sometimes they need those walls of protection in your home. Listen, 
dad, don't play good parent, bad parent with your kids, all right? You know, some parents, they want to be the good parent, and they want their spouse to be the bad parent. And so everything's good and fun with dad, but mom, she's the meanie, you know? Don't play that. Just be, remember we talked about being unified in our marriage here? And they need walls of protection. They need you to help protect them from things that are harmful and hurtful for your kids. You know what they are. You face some of those things in your life. You know how to protect your children. And so don't, they'll say, well, I, they're not going to be happy with me and their friends are going to be upset. It doesn't matter. You're, you're a parent first and foremost. Some parents, they try to be their, their kid's best friend. And there's nothing wrong with being your kid's best friend, but you need to make sure that you realize that you're their parent first and foremost. And sometimes everything you say might not be the funnest thing for your kids. But you are their parent, amen? And you're there to protect them. Have some rules, have some boundaries, and then stick to your guns, parents. Dads, listen, make sure if you say no, it means no. If you say yes, it means yes. Keep your word. One of the hardest things to do as a dad is to keep my word. There's been times where my boys will say, Dad, can we wrestle? And I'll go, listen, I'm really tired. Can we do it tomorrow night? Do you think they forgot? Oh, no. <laughs> Come home the next night. Hey, you said we were going to wrestle tonight. Now, listen, if I'm a man of my word, I'm going to do what? I'm going to keep my word. I'm going to do what I say. Your kids need to see that you keep your word. And so if you say yes, mean it. If you say no, mean it. They need to have some walls of protection. Walls are not to make your life miserable. Oh, I don't want to have any walls because it's going to make my life miserable. No, walls are there to protect you. Not to make you miserable. All right, number five, number five, the joint compound of love. The joint compound of love. After you have a foundation, you put up the boards, you fasten them, and then after that, you have to put up some walls. You got to put up that sheetrock, all right? And once you put the sheetrock up, the next thing you do is you mud it. You put on that joint compound. What does that do? That closes up all the seams. It covers all the screw and nail holes and, and, and makes it all look unified together. But also we realize that the joint compound of love is so important in a home. It fills the cracks and covers all the blemishes. And Ephesians chapter four, verse number two, go there with me real quick. Ephesians chapter four, verse number two. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 2. The Bible says, With all lowliness and meekness and with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. In love. Joint compound is going to fill those cracks and those blemishes. Love covereth a multitude of sins, the Bible says. If we will apply love in our home, it'll cover up a lot of things. I was listening to something. The other day, somebody was talking about uh, forgiveness and how oftentimes when we forgive uh, or when we're asking for forgiveness from someone or apology, I'm sorry, when we're apologizing to people, we often add the word but in there. <laughs> well, please forgive me, but, you know, and then we kind of add why we did it. Listen, if you truly love and you love in the right way, it doesn't matter what kind of feelings you have about the that you're concerned about the other person's feelings. We can patch a lot of holes in our marriage, in our relationships with our kids, if we will apply the joint compound of love. It covereth a multitude of sins. And then lastly, the paint of purity. The paint of purity. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse number 22. 1 Timothy chapter 5 and verse number 22. First Timothy 5 verse 22 the Bible says this lay hands suddenly on no man neither be partaker of any of other men's sins and then these three words keep thyself pure keep thyself pure you know when you put paint on something after the walls been textured and after the joint compound has filled all the cracks when you apply that paint it's beautiful I'm looking forward to when we're all done and covering everything up and finally paint and it's all unified in here it's going to look gorgeous it's going to be pretty and you know what in your home dad you need to have the paint of purity there is nothing worse in a home than the blemish 
of impurity in a home. Dad, the best way that you can lead in your home is be a man of purity, purity. Fathers, purity is not just a teenager thing. It's not just the young adult things. Our, by the way, I forgot to mention our teenagers are going to youth conference tomorrow. Pray for them. Some big decisions that many of them will make at a youth conference. But you know what, Dad? Uh, uh, decisions that teenagers make about purity, you need to make some of those decisions yourself. A amen? amen? Amen. Dad, be careful about what you look at on the television and in the magazines that you read. Your kids are watching. They're looking at the examples that you're making. Even if your kids aren't watching, realize this. God is. God is. You want to ruin your marriage quicker than anything? Then be impure. Be impure. Purity makes a home look good. It makes it look pretty. Just like paint purifies a home. Listen, make sure that you are being pure. I want to read some stats that I read in a Christian magazine that was handed to me. Uh, recently, it says this 47% of families in the United States reported that pornography is a problem in their home. 56% of American divorces involve one party having an obsessive interest in pornographic websites. 59% of pastors stated that married men seek help more for pornography use than any other problem. 55% of married men and 25% of married women say that they often watch pornography at least once a month. Folks, we have a problem. We have a problem of purity. Of purity. It, 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 it's the elephant in the room. It's the big excuse that everybody has. But if you want to ruin your home quicker than anything, don't be pure. Folks, listen. Purity makes everything look pretty. I know you think you're the exception to the rule, right? Oh, I can handle this. I'm, I'm tough. I can handle this. Listen, it, Satan is the master at bringing things into your life to ruin your home quicker than anything. Amen. Amen? Amen. Fathers, we need some pure homes. And it starts with you. It starts with you. Would you be pure? The Bible said there in 1 Timothy, Paul was speaking to the young Timothy and he said, keep thyself pure. The greatest thing we can do for our families is have purity in our home. Men, you must lead in your home in this area of purity. Stand strong. Don't be too proud. By the way, don't be too proud to admit that you have a problem. If you do, seek your pastor's help. Seek the word of God and ask the Lord to help you through this. Dads, you work so hard to make sure your homes are built well and look good. But how about your family? Your homes look nice. The paint looks good. Everything looks great about your home. But how about your family? How are they doing? Do you have these building pieces of building materials? The Bible says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. All the work that you're putting into your kids is for vain if you don't allow the Lord to give you those building materials. And I gave, I gave you some today. Apply those building materials to your home so that you will have a strong, beautiful, well-pleasing home. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I, I pray today that this message has helped some men here today. Lord, I, I want...